Before this video gets started, I've listened to the people in the comments, and for the Where Are They Now videos, the career summaries will be shorter, and the Where Are They Now parts will be longer. For future episodes, I focus on only going through the really interesting or really not known facts about these people's careers. So it'll stuff interesting facts, but it'll be a lot shorter because I'm not going to go through every single detail. I would have liked for this one to be a little bit shorter, but it's a good start, so let's get started. Brandon Roy was a three-time NBA All-Star that was on pace for a Hall of Fame career. He had great potential, but was plagued with injuries throughout his short career. His injuries forced him to retire at only 28 years old. Now he's 33 and hasn't played in the NBA for several years. So where is he now? To get the full story, we'll start from the very beginning. By the time that he attended Garfield High School, he was considered one of Washington's best high school players. It's also important to note that Brandon tours meniscus heading into his senior season, which would play a big role later on. He was a four-star recruit and rated the number six point guard coming out of high school. But he had difficulty passing the SAT, which was an NCAA requirement. Studied with tutors, but still couldn't meet the requirements after four attempts. So he got a job working at the Seattle docks and doubts that he couldn't continue his basketball career. He finally passed the test on his fifth attempt, which allowed him to enroll at the University of Washington. He anticipated entering the NBA draft after his junior year, but when teammate Nate Robinson and UW signee Martel Webster declared for the draft, he decided to stay at Washington because he'd now have a more prominent role as the star of the team, where he'd increase his position in the draft and have a greater appeal to NBA teams. After a rare four seasons in college, Brandon Roy entered the NBA draft, where his improved stats would have helped him get drafted in the 2006 NBA draft by the Minnesota Timberwolves where he'd immediately be traded to the Portland Trailblazers. Roy averaged near 17 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists for his rookie season, earning him the NBA Rookie of the Year award, even though he only played 57 games for the season. In just his third season in the NBA, he finished 9th in the MVP voting and was named to the All-NBA second team. On April 11, 2010, he injured his right knee and it was confirmed that he had a bone bruise and also a slight meniscus tear. And in the offseason, Kobe Bryant had said that Brandon Roy was the hardest player to guard in the Western Conference because he had no weaknesses in his game, except his knees. At the beginning of the 2010 season is when all his injuries really started catching up with him. In December, his knees were really affecting him due to lack of cartilage from his treatment before and his injury back in high school. He was listed out indefinitely and many believed he would never play at the same level again. So the Blazers started running their offense through LaMarcus Aldridge. Right before training camp of the next season, Brandon announced that his knees had deteriorated so much because of the lack of cartilage that he announced his retirement. So Portland used their amnesty clause on him. One year later, he decided that he wasn't done playing in the NBA after he had a surgery to repair his knee. He couldn't return to Portland since they used the amnesty clause on him, so he eventually chose to sign with the Minnesota Timberwolves and he'd come back and play only 5 games before injuring his knee once again, requiring right knee surgery. He only averaged 5 points and was waived on May 10th, 2013. He said that he came back because he didn't want to have any regrets. His injuries forced him to retire at only 28 years old. Now he's 33 and hasn't played in the NBA for several years. So where is he now? After having to retire for the second time, Brandon spent time away from basketball to enjoy the family life and being around his two children. He was okay with this life and turned down an offer to even become an NBA analyst. He deeply missed playing in the NBA, but it accepted how his career ended. His close friend Will Conroy said, Not getting to play bothered him most, but the living part of it, the aspect of losing fame and all that, didn't bother him one bit. Roy kept up with the basketball scene in his hometown of Seattle and worked with some of the city's best talents. He wanted to coach and his friends and family pushed him to do it. He wanted a flexible job that would allow him to stay around his family, so when the job at Nathan Hale High School arose, he jumped on it. The school named him head coach and gave him full control of the team. He'd need the full control because the team only won one game the year before and lost a game by 81 points. So Brandon began recruiting players. He recruited Michael Porter Jr., who many believe is the top high school player and are already saying he'll be the top pick in the 2018 NBA draft. They also recruited his brother Jonte Porter, who is a four-star recruit. Both of them had just led their school to a state title in Missouri and are both two of the best prospects in their classes. These two top prospects caused a domino effect because seven other players transferred that month, which included Nathan Hale's entire starting lineup. They won the first eight games and beat many high-profile schools and prospects along the way with Porter Jr. leading the charge. Roy is cited as being a great coach because he remains calm in all situations and gets interactive on the court with his team. 
This style has worked for him because the team went 29-0 winning the state championship of Washington. He said that coaching has relayed his passion and fire for basketball and is yet to be determined whether he plans on taking his coaching talents into college basketball. In April 2017, Brandon Roy was shot while attending a birthday party at his grandmother's house. The injuries were said to have been very minor and he was released from the hospital the same day that he was admitted. The shooting was said to have been gang related and Brandon was trying to shield the small children when he was shot in the leg. No men have been identified or charged and Brandon Roy has yet to have an interview with the police which they're still waiting for.